Hello, thanks for joining. Uh, I hope you are having a great experience uh, today in the DevOps track. I'm gonna speak about the deployment, deployment from two different perspectives. Deployments from like uh, how our customers, how fastly customers are deploying edge applications to our platform. And then I will also uh, quickly describe the other side of the equation. So some internal details and how we are deploying uh, some of the components uh, supporting uh, that edge uh, cloud platform. So this is uh, Daniel Caballero. Uh, I've been working at Fastly for almost five years now. And yeah, looking at pictures from previous events I joined, it looks like there is like a, a pattern. I tend to wear a Polish metal t-shirts. And today I didn't want to make an exception. And the second fun fact is that as many other metal, metal uh, fans, I also play in a band, in a local band in Spain. And uh, what is interesting from this is that we published uh, a website uh, just uh, three three, four weeks ago. And in order to do this, I just use Fastly uh, services. So I use Glitch uh, to like uh, configure that web interface, uh, the, the website. Uh, Glitch provides like a very nice uh, UI uh, development experience, uh, which simplifies the uh, publishing web applications. And then I, I'm also serving the, the website using Fastly. So if you visit uh, this uh, site, uh, you will be becoming a Fastly user. But moving back to business uh, topics, uh, today, as I was describing, there are like uh, two big uh, blocks. First, I need to quickly introduce uh, Fastly and our compute platform. Uh, this is not to sell you Fastly at all. It's a uh, backend engineer in the organization, but I need to give uh, that context uh, to help you understand a bit what we are going to describe later, which is how uh, our customers can deploy their applications on Fastly. And then uh, the second big block is uh, giving you some uh, an overview of some implementation details of uh, the compute platform and how we are uh, maintaining and deploying new versions of our software stack supporting the, the public service. So. Uh, I wish I could see your faces uh, now and ask you if uh, you know about Fastly or not. Maybe you are already a Fastly customer or maybe not. Uh, the point is that uh, Fastly, uh, it's, uh, we are doing our best to improve uh, the internet user's experience uh, from a performance perspective, but also uh, from a security standpoint. And there are many uh, uh, companies already trusting us to deliver their uh, contents, uh, their streams, their web pages uh, to their end users. And in order to do this, uh, we have a relatively big uh, network. I think today we have like 100 uh, points of uh, presence. A uh, point of presence is like a data center with uh, Fastly machines, uh, which uh, helps uh, our customers to deliver their contents. And yeah, we have pops uh, like around the, the globe. If we, we focus in Europe, I'm a bit sad that there is no a uh, pop in Poland right now. However, that does not mean that the uh, Fastly is not performant in Poland. And uh, because in the end, like uh, having good performance from uh, our perspective is not just being geographically close to the end user, but also to have very good connectivity, to have the capacity in the right places. Uh, so in the end, the geographical distance uh, may not be the, the most important factor. So to give you uh, like uh, an example, and I'm going to switch to the terminal and try the demo effects. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, my band web page is hosted at Fastly. And I can, for, for instance, do a very quick, cool uh, command. So I'm iterating here and just fetching the web, uh, the, our uh, 
uh, web page, uh, the, the index uh, uh, front page. And uh, I only want to display uh, which machine is serving our traffic and the time to first byte. So like the, a bit like the, the response time of our service. So as you can see here, the, the requests, uh, I'm currently here in Poland in, in the conference venue. And uh, I'm using uh, like Ethernet cable. Uh, however, uh, Curl, it's not reducing connections between different calls. So this is a bit like worst case scenario where we need to assume the three-way handshake for TCP, also the, the TLS, uh, establishing the TLS session uh, to in the end fetch the content. But even in that case, I see that the response time is around uh, 64 milliseconds, which is not especially bad. Actually, if I compare uh, to the conference uh, uh, web uh, page, uh, positive.tech, uh, there is no X served uh, by a header in this case, but I see the time to first by being more than three seconds, two seconds. So uh, yeah, I, if uh, there is members from the organization here, I would invite them uh, to put something like Fastly in front of the website. Anyways, back uh, to the slide. Uh, the distance, the geographical distance is not always the most important factor. And we do our best uh, to keep uh, the, our pops properly sized uh, so the contents are there when they are uh, requested. In fact, this may sound already familiar to you. It's a bit like the uh, CDN use case. So Fastly started building all this network uh, to uh, provide CDN services to our customers. And then our customers can use uh, Fastly uh, to uh, fetch contents uh, with uh, like configuring different topologies. So in this case, imagine a customer with users across the globe. Users are going to land in the closest uh, pop. But then there is the shield pop concept, uh, which uh, can uh, help uh, to minimize uh, connections from edge pops uh, to origin servers. So to avoid like long distance uh, connections and also to uh, centralize all, all connections from a single and close location, which reduces a bit the, the, the resource consumption in the origin servers. Also, this kind of topologies with uh, different cache servers in the middle maximizes the heat ratio, which means also like uh, end users uh, experiencing a better performance. Anyways, so far, this was like a brief introduction of uh, Fastly and uh, how our network can benefit uh, our customers and uh, internet users. But uh, today, I will focus in the compute uh, portion. And in order to introduce Fastly Compute, uh, you are in the DevOps track, so I guess uh, you know about Kubernetes. Maybe you know uh, about Kubernetes more than me. Uh, but anyways, uh, like to get an idea of uh, what compute is, imagine like with uh, this network I described, uh, imagine you had like a massive Kubernetes cluster uh, with uh, rather than pops, imagine that the pops were node pools distributed across the, po the, the globe. Uh, so the, all these node pools having very great connectivity to your end users, then each pop each node pool being like tens or hundreds of machines each. And when you push, imagine you are pushing your container or a new version of your pods uh, to your Kubernetes clusters. And in this case, uh, these containers uh, getting proactively uh, uh, enabled or deployed uh, to every single individual machine in less than a minute. And not only this, that, uh, imagine also that the, all the containers were getting recreated every time uh, you get an incoming request, rather than reusing the containers or the containers uh, serving multiple requests at the same time. So with a different set of technologies, uh, that is the idea a bit behind Fastly Compute. So we had a big network with a great connectivity and a lot of compute capacity. So we enabled the capacity 
y tu, y tu our customers o potential customers to deploy their applications directly in our infrastructure and benefit from all this capacity and the, and the, the small latency to their end users. In order to do this, rather than using Docker containers or OC containers or Kubernetes, the technology that, uh, that facilitates this is a WebAssembly. So the same uh, WebAssembly support you, ha you have in your browser uh, to run web applications and with the uh, different tabs and websites being isolated from each other, it's what they uh, fastly ported uh, to our fleet. And that gives you many nice properties and capabilities uh, any programming language that compiles to WebAssembly is, uh, can be potentially used to deploy applications uh, to Fastly. And uh, at the same time, uh, WebAssembly, the, like, the bootstrap time is so uh, short that we can afford uh, the recreation of all the containers or spawning new containers for any incoming request uh, without worrying about cold start uh, times. In order to make the development experience as good as possible, there are uh, several SDKs available for the different programming languages. We officially support uh, the, the Rust uh, SDK, so the Rust language, JavaScript, and uh, Golang. But there are also uh, community-maintained SDKs uh, for Fastly uh, for other programming languages. So if, uh, if you want to deploy your edge applications uh, close, close to the end users in the language of your choice, uh, there are probably many possibilities for you. So, uh, to close this chapter, there are many uh, online resources uh, you can use to develop your applications, uh, to compile to WebAssembly, and to run them in providers like uh, Fastly. Developer.fastly.com uh, gives you many receipts and hints and uh, documentation about how to do this. There is also, I think, docs, docs.fastly.com with the official documentation. So uh, you have plenty of resources. And at this stage, uh, let's actually jump into deployment aspects. OK, imagine you are interested in deploying an application uh, to Fastly uh, using Fastly Compute, so compiling your the application to WebAssembly and then pushing this uh, to us. Uh, in order to do this, uh, you probably want to log in uh, to create a user in the Fastly platform. There is a free trial uh, service, uh, so you can immediately create a user and get access uh, for free. Actually, the website of my band uh, is uh, currently hosting, use, hosted using the free trial. We are not so popular, so it's completely fine, but you can also use this as a playground and, and to play uh, with the code and with uh, your use case. And OK, once uh, you have access uh, to Fastly and the Fastly control plane, uh, then uh, it's worth to note that our control plane is like API first. So all the capabilities we offer are available uh, via an API. And if you want to do things like at low level, there is also uh, libraries for uh, many different uh, programming languages you can use to interact with your, our control plane to deploy in the end applications to our fleet. But most of our uh, customers, they use directly the Fastly CLI. So the, there is that the CLI that helps you deploy applications or configure your services. Uh, that CLI is also the core of uh, many CI and CD integrations. Uh, so for instance, we are maintaining also a GitHub action uh, that can help you to automatically deploy uh, your code from your GitHub repo uh, to uh, our platform. There is also the Fastly Cloud Deploy that helps you setting up uh, that continuous delivery uh, 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 model. Uh, there is also a Fastly Terraform uh, plugin, so if you prefer to maintain uh, your solution, solutions using infrastructure as code. Uh, there is uh, that uh, Fastly maintain a Terraform plugin. I think other infrastructure as code uh, solutions, uh, they are also reusing that plugin, including Pulumi, but uh, we don't officially uh, support this. And uh, finally, if especially while you are deploying, developing uh, your application and you are doing like a uh, troubleshooting or in the early stages of the development, 
uh, maybe you want to test uh, compute applications locally. And for this uh, purpose, uh, we actually uh, maintain an open source version of uh, our compute platform. It's called uh, Viseroy, and it's completely integrated also with the Fastly CLI. So if uh, you want to run locally uh, your uh, applications and see how things are working before pushing this to our control plane, that is uh, also an option. So, okay. We, I, I gave you uh, a lot of uh, uh, choices, options for your choices, but at some point, maybe you have uh, one application you want to deploy uh, to uh, the Edge platform. You may be a standalone developer and you maybe you can directly push this to our control plane using maybe the Fastly CLI, or maybe you are part of a team and you have your uh, CI uh, processes uh, with uh, testing and with uh, some automation to validate your uh, changes or even uh, peer reviews. And once everything is green, maybe you also have the automation to, complete, uh, to automatically deploy your service to our control plane. The point is that uh, by default, we don't slow deployments down. Uh, so uh, we give you all like the full power. And as soon as you push the new version of your application, we are gonna try to deploy this as quickly as possible to the uh, to all our infrastructure, so to the to all the pops across the globe, uh, which is uh, super powerful, but at the same time can be a bit scary, because that means that uh, you can deploy your bugs uh, immediately and break your applications everywhere. Uh, there are many customers using our config store service, which is kind of a key value data store, but uh, specialized for configuration items. So uh, you can potentially deploy uh, code deploy, you can decouple code deployments from functionality enablement. And with uh, by integrating with config store, you can do feature toggles and maybe one day deploy the code supporting a new functionality and then control how you are activating that functionality with the uh, config store. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe you are used to deployment uh, pipelines and maybe you already have a deployment pipelines for other applications. Here you can also configure things like this uh, because nothing prevents you from deploying your code uh, to multiple uh, services. Uh, so having multiple deployments of the same application, but maybe with uh, di different DNS entries. So you control when you are updating which environment so uh, in this example, imagine that uh, yeah, you as a developer, you have your new version of your application and you have like an stage environment. So you have like a, a specific uh, fastly deployment to update the stage version of your application where maybe you as a developer, you do the, all the validations, uh, you check that everything is working. And once uh, that is ready, uh, maybe you, uh, automatically deploy to your pre-production uh, environment. So another copy of your application, but under a different DNS name, uh, where maybe you have automated tests, end-to-end -end tests, um, or even bots, like uh, validating specific aspects of your application. If that was uh, successful, maybe you want to uh, push your new version to a Canary uh, deployment. Uh, where maybe you prefer to things uh, to leave things baking for a while, maybe an hour or whatever you choose, uh, to ensure that uh, you are not baking uh, a portion of uh, your uh, end user requests. And after uh, a green uh, light, uh, you can deploy, you can update your production deployment and consider your new functionality or changes active in our entire fleet. There is one interesting box in this uh, diagram that is this route APP in, in the top right. Uh, this is uh, one idea you can potentially use. Uh, so given you can deploy many applications to Fastly, uh, there is one concept we call a uh, service chaining which means uh, one application at Fastly calling to another Fastly application. 
Uh, so you can have multiple services and they, depending on each other and doing calls to each other as you may have in a microservices uh, architecture. And uh, this is a very powerful concept because it uh, let you implement uh, patterns like the API gateway pattern or just have a very simple uh, service that only does HTTP routing for your main application and, for instance, have control of which portion of your requests you are uh, sending to the Canary deployment and which portion uh, you keep in the main production stage. So, the yeah, service chaining uh, can be very interesting for this uh, use case. And in the end, this is a programmatic uh, platform, so you can use uh, your services as uh, you feel it's more convenient for your use case. So, uh, to complete uh, this uh, chapter, there are many other tools I didn't present, uh, which includes, for instance, uh, Fastly Fiddle, so a web interface that helps you uh, test with, uh, uh, with edge code uh, to test also many examples, uh, many public examples uh, we have available uh, and do like uh, your own execution uh, from your uh, browser. There is also a, a lot of functionality around logs. The, the Fastly CLI gives you a log tailing capability, which lets you see in real time uh, the logs your application may be, well, the standard output and standard error your application may be generating, which may be pretty useful for uh, troubleshooting. But also you can uh, uh, you can integrate uh, your Fastly service with the observability provider of your choice and push lo your logs uh, to that provider and have reporting or look for specific events. So uh, all this is a screenshot from our public documentation. So you can browse this and get an idea of uh, how you can uh, uh, completely deploy and maintain your applications in a compute platform like uh, this one. Okay, so with this, we are about to enter into the big second block, which is about uh, some internals, uh, some aspects of our architecture that enables uh, fastly compute and how we are deploying some of these uh, key components. Before that, I'll give you uh, like a, a minute in case you want to write some questions into the chat. I think the moderator can forward me uh, your questions. So before starting the second uh, phase, do you have any question? I also need to say that uh, I will be in the venue today and I will be joining the offline part. So if uh, you want to have a chat uh, or you have a specific question, I will be super happy to answer. So worth to say that I'm just an engineer. I'm not like uh, in the sales organization. So if uh, there are sales related topics, I can just redirect you to the, the right people. Great, I don't see any question in the chat. So I'm gonna continue. I will. There will be also another slot for questions I, at the end of the talk. Uh, I will also keep an eye in the chat in case uh, you have anything, uh, any question regarding one specific slide. But yeah, let's move forward. So in order to de uh, to describe uh, how we deploy software. I also need to introduce uh, some of the components uh, which are uh, enabling uh, the compute platform. And I'm actually working the execute D team. The execute D team maintains execute D. And what is execute D? Execute D is uh, one diamond we have in our platform. It's like the core diamond that uh, runs the uh, compute applications. So that diamond runs in all our edge servers, and every time there is an incoming request, we create a session, like a container, with your, the, your code if you are a fast customer. So we create that sandbox, and we also implement some host calls, so letting your application to interact with other fast services and the rest of the world. So if you are consuming the SDK, there are many SDK uh, calls that in the end are uh, calling our host calls, which implement a specific functionality you may need. 
So, uh, yes, uh, the execute the uh, repo uh, where we store our code uh, publishes actually two packages. The execute the package that actually gets deployed uh, to our entire fleet. And then the code gen package that it's like the, the compiler that uh, converts uh, WebAssembly application, applications into a, into a machine a, a instructions we can directly execute in our fleet. Then where is the, that executed diamond running? It's in all our compute machines, in all the edge uh, nodes. Yeah, so in each pop, in each uh, point of presence, we have uh, many boxes, depending on the location, depending on the how uh, the depending on the population in that geographic space, we may have more machines or less, normally tens, hundreds of machines. And one property of uh, our fleet is that all machines, they run exactly the same services. All machines can serve a request in a given moment uh, in time. So uh, there is a load balancing solution in front of these services, redirecting connections and user connections and uh, requests to any healthy pop, any healthy machine in a given pop. So uh, there is uh, some literature available about our load balancing solution. It's a bit particular because it's uh, it's completely uh, software. It takes advantage of the networking devices we have, which are programmable, and there are some components that runs in the switches, some others in our cache uh, nodes. And in order to uh, deliver terabits of uh, traffic in each pop, the solution is completely stateless, but uh, keeps uh, requests uh, and the connections consistently uh, distributed against the, our uh, machines in a given pop. So there are uh, colleagues of mine who presented the, the solution some years ago in some public uh, conferences, including NSDI, but also uh, SRECon. So if you are curious, uh, there are recordings available. And there is also like uh, some uh, public papers describing uh, some aspects of uh, this load balancing solution. So this is like the edge load balancing solution. So given an incoming a request that, and, well, a connection and a request that arrives to a given pop, this solution is going to select one healthy machine. And once uh, that uh, request lands in that pop, uh, we can uh, do all the computation and generate the response uh, for that uh, end user request. This is where things connect with deployment. So in order uh, to deploy without impacting end users, uh, we need uh, to drain our machines. And we used to, in order to deploy new versions of Execute uh, without impacting comp compute uh, sessions, uh, we used to uh, use the drain role model, which means like uh, we were saying the edge load balancer, okay, please stop redirecting new connections uh, to this edge node. And that means that uh, the node uh, starts uh, draining and eventually gets idle. So after a certain amount of time, there is no active requests in that given machine. And we can do an upgrade in place of all the the components that run in that edge uh, node. However, this is like relatively easy and uh, relatively clean, uh, but there are many drawbacks. And one of the, the problems with uh, this approach is that uh, it's uh, a bit disruptive, means we need to remove available capacity from our edge box when we are upgrading uh, Execute. And uh, we're removing capacity for compute, but also other uh, fastly services uh, using uh, the same infrastructure, which is not great, and also means that we need to move uh, connections from one server to another and wait some time to ensure that connections eventually uh, get uh, idle and we don't impact end users. So it's not a super, uh, super quick uh, deployment model given this drain stage. And also we need to be careful with uh, how many times we are deploying because uh, moving connections around can have some impact in end users' latency. Uh, so we don't want to do this very frequently, uh, which uh, can be especially scary if you have an urgent bug fix uh, you want to deploy to, to the fleet. 
So uh, in order to mitigate uh, risks and impact, uh, we benefit from the anti-peak concept. So given our pops, they tend to be uh, hot when users are awake and when uh, most of the internet users in that geographical area are interacting with their devices and equipment. Uh, when a big portion of that population is sleeping, there are not so many requests. So that is the moment where we normally do the drain rolls. So we don't want to, we want to minimize impact. And also if something goes wrong, we also want to minimize uh, the amount of uh, users and uh, requests we are affecting. So most of the drain rolls uh, only uh, get uh, executed on uh, anti-peak. And that means uh, uh, that having deployment pipelines like this, so this is the execute the deployment pipeline we have been uh, using for, uh, uh, for uh, more than a couple of years uh, now, which means like uh, cutting a new executive versions every week. Uh, so building an operating system package, then uh, upgrading our canary uh, uh, nodes uh, to ensure that the non-critical uh, traffic is not getting bro broken. If that uh, goes okay, then uh, we uh, expose that new version to the RC uh, nodes, which is more or less one between one and two percent of our public fleet. Uh, and after a period of observation, normally 24 hours, uh, that new version goes to the uh, to 25 percent of the fleet, what we call the limited uh, deployment. Uh, given that deployments with uh, the drain mode uh, are relatively slow, that takes a while. Uh, we also keep uh, observing that everything goes uh, fine. There is also like some smoke tests and end-to-end -end tests we execute between these phases to ensure that uh, nothing important is getting broken. And uh, finally, uh, like a week later, we deploy the executive version to the rest of the fleet, first uh, to almost 75% of the fleet. And finally, some special pops, what we call the special pops, the, the sensitive pops where we don't want to, uh, or we want to minimize the, the amount of rollbacks uh, we may need to do. So uh, that uh, pipeline is not especially great, means uh, deploying an executive version uh, like uh, over uh, almost a three weeks uh, period and cutting versions every week rather than doing more frequent uh, releases. And also that pipeline does not work pretty well for incident mitigation. So if there is something broken in production and you need to deploy a fix, this is probably not going to be uh, super effective. Uh, and if you need an urgent bug fix, uh, you need to like arrange with the rest of the organization, uh, like uh, how to, uh, how, impo uh, how uh, you need to reach an agreement. So, if the bug fix is very important, then we are allowed to uh, impact a bit the end users connections. Uh, but uh, yeah, we are lucky that we don't need to press that button very often. But it's not great uh, to uh, rely on a pipeline like this for bug fixes. So let's. Uh, there is one thing that changes almost everything, but it's uh, one of the reasons why these drain rolls are slow is because the cross-component traffic uh, used to be local. So the edge load balancer selects a compute machine to serve the request. But then uh, the communication between the different uh, compute components is local. So if a compute component is uh, unhealthy or we are doing an upgrade, uh, we need to completely drain the entire node. Uh, but uh, a few months ago, this changed. And we actually uh, introduced like a second layer load balancer, so like an application level load balancer in our cache and edge nodes. Uh, so we were already using H2O. H2O is uh, like a proxy between end users and, uh, and execute D, the compute diamond. And uh, that uh, proxy cares about TLS termination and a uh, protocol conversion. So what did change in this case is that H2O uh, introduced the WLM, the Workload Manager capability, uh, which means uh, like H2O clustering 
with all the uh, nodes in a given pop. So if, as in this example, and by the way, this diagram is from a colleague, or, uh, all the, the merit goes uh, to him. And, um, but yeah, the, the idea is that the, if one executive process is unhealthy, or maybe we are restarting it, or uh, we need to upgrade the uh, executive, H2O is going to know about uh, that uh, individual diamond uh, unavailability and can redirect end user request uh, to another uh, node, a healthy node in the same pop, which means that the, the H2O that the edge load balancer is hitting is going to keep all active connections the same. So connections are not going to be interrupted, but the requests can benefit from all health or from other healthy uh, uh, processes in that pop uh, rather than having to drain the node for the edge uh, traffic. So that it's a very uh, interesting capability for many different use cases. By default, everything gets routed locally uh, to maximize uh, performance and reduce uh, resources consumption. But uh, having the option to redirect uh, traffic from one node to another without affecting customer sessions and their connections, that is very great because means that in combination with more granular deployments, so deployments that only upgrade a specific component like Executi. So the combination of these two factors let us be more aggressive uh, with the deployments and uh, deploy also more frequently uh, that uh, core diamond. So uh, that opens a lot lots of uh, options and uh, also let us uh, revisit uh, the pipeline I described. Uh, I see the old pipeline a bit like this, like trying to go up as uh, a ladder, uh, so some stairs, but uh, with the big steps uh, each time, which uh, can be a bit risky. Uh, it's not a very comfortable and maybe you are slow uh, going like with uh, these big steps and the risk of uh, falling down, it's uh, there. And uh, uh, the, the new pipeline proposal tries to go in this, uh, to use smaller steps, uh, which gives you like a most, more comfortable journey uh, going up the, the ladder. And, and yes, uh, also being safer because the, the chances of uh, falling back or falling down are probably smaller. And yes, this is the, the idea actually in practice. So this is the, the pipeline uh, proposal uh, or the pipeline actually uh, we are uh, trying, we are starting to implement uh, for the executive deployments. Uh, rather than having more than two weeks for the pipeline, uh, we can complete uh, the, the, the pipeline in one week and a day. And it uh, also means uh, progressing in the different stages uh, every day because the, the roles can be quicker, they are safer, and it also gives us the opportunity to introduce, for instance, an intermediate stage, what I call the RC+. Plus. So rather than going from 1% or 2% of the fleet to 25% of the fleet, so that transition between RC and limited deployments I previously described, rather than do, uh, doing this, you can go from 1%, 2% to 6%, and then from 6% to 25%. We see which is a more gradual uh, uh, promotion. Then uh, also it is uh, the fact that we can trans transition from one stage to another in a single day. It uh, means uh, that the pack fixes also can get promoted uh, uh, quicker. And that and also helps us uh, cutting a release. Uh, so having a new package every day with uh, the executive changes rather than once per week, which also the risks individual deployments because there is less delta to promote. And, and yeah, and also uh, introduce or exposes new functionality quicker uh, to a production traffic. So a uh, quick summary and let me do a quick time check. Okay, we are closing the, the session, but we are on time. So the, uh, the old pipeline uh, used to have like three in-flight execute diversions across our fleet with a new pipeline where we are cutting releases more uh, often. 
we have up to six in-flight versions, but we are putting a release every day, which means in very worst case, so in Friday, if you have new functionality, you are merging in main branch on Friday, that means that you are going to deploy uh, or expose that functionality next Monday uh, to the production fleet. And uh, you can use the same deployment strategy to uh, deploy Argent uh, bug fixes because we get the capacity to transition uh, or to upgrade the entire fleet in 24 hours. So that is uh, everything I had to, uh, I wanted to uh, expose uh, to you. Uh, before closing, just a recap uh, for um, a recap of everything I explained. First, we describe it a bit fastly uh, to then focus a bit in fastly compute and how you can use compute to deploy your edge applications. Uh, the different options you have uh, to deploy these applications to the uh, to the fleet, and uh, also uh, then I exposed some implementation aspects of our platform of uh, the compute infrastructure. Uh, to finally describe a bit how we are upgrading Executi and how uh, how we are transitioning to safer and more frequent releases of our software. So that's it. Thank you for uh, joining. I hope uh, you, found, you found the, the talk interesting. Uh, now, if you have questions, you can write them in the chat. I also want to thank my colleagues at Fastly. Uh, who are also who are developing for uh, many aspects I presented today, and also the the, orga the organization of the, this conference, who uh, did great uh, to facilitate uh, this slot. So thank you. Questions? Okay, I don't see any question in the in the private chat. Uh, I will be, as I commented, I will be around today in the venue. So feel free to say hello and uh, to ask anything uh, you want. I will do my, my best to, to help you. So I'm closing here and I hope you have a great uh, time here in the conference and you enjoy the rest of the talks and see you around. Thank you.